Here in 2022, there are now a decent amount of baseball titles on the Nintendo Switch to choose from. Now, whether you want to go with some kind of arcade-style ball game or something with more of a realistic look and feel, there's definitely something out there for you. Now, Konami, believe it or not, has been one of the most aggressive companies when it comes to pumping out baseball games on the Switch. Now, that all started back in 2019 with GQO Power Pro Pro Baseball, and they followed that up with Power Pros 2020, and then in 2021, they had Pro Baseball Spirits, a simulation-style baseball game with realistic uh, baseball players. Now, eBaseball Power Pro Baseball 2022 marks the fourth game in the genre for the company. Now, if you're in the market for another baseball game on the Switch, or if you're looking for your first Japanese baseball game on the platform, we're here to tell you if this one is worth it. So let's go ahead and get into it. Danny from the Famicast here. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. Leave us a comment down below and we may read it out on our bi-weekly show called the Famicast. Today though, we're taking a look at eBaseball Powerful Pro Baseball 2022 on the Nintendo Switch in this review. The 2022 iteration of Power Pros offers the most modes that the series has ever seen. Now, of course, most of the previously introduced modes are there. Success mode, My Life, Pennant Race, uh, Live Scenario, and a whole lot more. Now, the previous 2020 version of the game was already packed to the gills with content, so I think it's good to see that this hasn't changed uh, with the Assyria version here, too. Now, the newest addition to Power Pro 2022 is Power Park. Now, this is essentially a baseball amusement park with a variety of different attractions to try out. Now, before release, Konami went on to say that this mode would see more additions after the release of the game and basically throughout the whole two-year cycle that it's going to be on the market. More on that here in just a little bit. And Sushi Survival is the one to kick everything off here. Now, basically in this mode, you're tasked with creating a team to take on some other random and sometimes uh, user-created teams. And you also take on some pro teams every once in a while, too. Now, basically, after choosing from one of three opponents, you're taken into a game of baseball. You, you don't play the whole game here, but rather you have the option to take control of your players in key game situations. Uh, you can also skip these and let the computer take control and basically simulate the action here. Now, if you win, you get to add player a player uh, to your roster, and you also gain some points. Now, the more times you win in a row, indicated by sushi plates stacking up, you're basically in like a sushi restaurant, um, the more points you get and the more difficult your opponents become and all this type of stuff. Now, I think this can be a pretty fun mode sometimes, um, and I really like the addition of the Kaiten Sushi Dome, which is, you know, it's like a sushi uh, conveyor belt kind of theme uh, little dome here. I think it's pretty funny. At the same time, I can see this being a little bit confusing though, as there is quite a bit of text to get through. Um, I'm going to try to work on a little kind of like a mini guide to kind of get you started, uh, hopefully sometime soon. So be sure to check back on that. Now, as it stands right now, Sushi Survival is the only mini game available in Power Park. Now, there are other modes, uh, and these are going to be called Powerful Royale and Powerful Coliseum, but these are currently being worked on with no solid release schedule announced as of the time I'm recording this. I think the initial messaging behind this mode seemed a little bit dishonest. I mean, maybe my expectations were just a little bit high, or not a little bit, they were just maybe way too high, as I took that, what they said to me is like, hey, we're going to add tons of mini games here in this mode. Now, you know, again, when it comes to content, there really isn't a reason to complain, as there's really a lot of different uh, modes to go through and stuff to play uh, here in Power Pro 2022. I just kind of don't know why, but I expected there to be more things uh, coming into Power Park. As for modes that I really like, I'm really into live scenario. Uh, it's pretty cool. Like, basically, you're going into games that really happen in real life and you're trying to change the outcomes or keep them the same so that's always kind of fun you also in and out really quickly uh, pennant mode is also great i mean you can play up to 30 years controlling one team and uh doing a bunch of stuff like that um i'm not really so much into the my life and like that type of stuff but you know if you're into that i, I think there's still a lot of fun to be had here now just a, a bit of a note here on the online play if you're looking to test your skills against the best of the best maybe, uh, players in Japan. Konami's definitely got your back here. Um, the online hub in this game, uh, if you want to play online, it's, it can be found in this thing called Championship. I mean, here you can create your own lobbies, uh, complete with like in-game settings, like how many innings you want and all that type of stuff. Or you can join, join one of the many that are already available or created by users. You know, I, I didn't have enough time to actually record some footage uh, for this, but I would kind of temper my expectations with the online. I mean, obviously it's going to be highly dependent on your connection and the connection of your opponents. So uh, yeah, who knows how that's going to go. But if, if this is something that you want to do, it is here and you can try it out. 
Now, don't let these cute visuals fool you. I mean, while things do look very inviting, I think Power Pros, when it boils down to it, it's a simulation baseball game at heart. Now, if you played the game in the, any game in the series or any other simulation style baseball game in the past, you'll pretty much know what to expect. Uh, for batting here, you control an on-screen on -screen bat reticle and can press B for swings and A for bunts. Uh, if you press R, it changes to like a power mode, but the reticle becomes really small. So if you make contact with it, you can depending on where you make contact with the ball, you can, you know, hit it further and stuff like that. Uh, pitching is also pretty easy to wrap your head around. I mean, all you have to do is choose your pitch with the analog stick uh, in the direction uh, that indicates a pitch, and then you press B to fire away. Uh, defense is also pretty self-explanatory here as well, so I don't think I really need to get in that. But, you know, overall, as with Konami's previous entries into baseball games over the years, I think things feel pretty good here and really do give, like, a great simulation feel to this game. Now, I think the difficulty settings here can be a little bit unbalanced, though, with the switch from normal to, I think, powerful is one right after that. It can seem like it's a bit of a jump in difficulty, but, I mean, you can monkey around with stuff in custom difficulty levels and stuff like that, but I kind of wish Konami would kind of do a little bit more tweaking here. Now, not much has really changed since the Power Pro series has hit the Switch back in 2019. And I, I don't think that's necessarily much of a bad thing, though. I mean, in the Switch version of the game, you still do get sharp visuals, cute representations of Japanese baseball players, uh, great renderings of stadiums, and more here. Now, there are some limitations, and I think if you've watched any of my videos before, you probably know what they are. You know, smaller details such as logos on jerseys or signage throughout the stadiums are a bit low resolution. Now, not only that, but other things like like I've noticed in this version of the game in particular, like the crowd sometimes pops in and out um, whenever you're kind of doing like a wide camera shot and stuff like that. So, I mean, I think the engine or maybe just the switch in general is kind of starting to show its age here. Now, even with that said, I think these small hits to the visuals make it possible for the game to run super smoothly on the platform. Now, of course, if you're looking for ultimate visual fidelity, I'd suggest going with the PlayStation 4 version of the game. But anyways, in terms of sound, I think audio here is still pretty top-notch, you know, with this full in-game commentary, uh, authentic stadium sounds and cheers, all that type of stuff. I mean, you're not getting licensed music or anything like that, but everything is presented pretty well and gives you the feeling of being at an Apple actual Japanese baseball game. I think my only complaint here is with the commentary. You know, as far as I can tell, not much has really changed since the series hit the Switch in 2019, and heck, maybe before that. I kind of have a gap in my Power Pro playing history, so I, I can't really comment uh, between like the Wii and the Switch, but I don't know. I think maybe changing things up here by adding a color commentator or something like that would make things a little bit more fresh. Now, I think this goes without saying, but there is a lot of Japanese to wade through in this game. Uh, for some of the story, more story-driven or text-heavy modes, you might find some challenges uh, to get through this. I mean, if you're looking for some quick play options, I think modes like Live Scenario are easy to get in, in and out of uh, with minimal Japanese language ability. Like I said earlier, I'm trying to work on a few translations to offer, but I'm not making any promises. Keep checking us out on our website, thefamicast.com, social media, at thefamicast on Twitter, and, you know, sub here on YouTube. Um, we can maybe send out some updates that way too. Power Pro Baseball 2022 is a solid game, albeit a bit of a rehash of 2020. Now, Power Park, the newest addition to the series, is fun, but I don't know if it's enough to warrant a purchase if you already have Power Pro 2020. Now, on the other hand, if you're interested in a bit of a refreshed baseball game, or if you really like keeping up with the current rosters and stuff like that, I think there's still a lot to like here in this package. If you're looking to just dip your toes into Power Pros or just into Japanese baseball in general on the Switch, I should just trying to find the 2020 version on sale somewhere or checking out my review and seeing if that one uh, would be for you as well. Now, as always, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you like what you see, feel free to drop this video a like. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe. We've got tons of podcasts, video reviews, looks at Japanese games like this, and a whole lot more. Also, be sure to check out Famicast.com for more updates on Japanese games. And yeah, so again, this is Danny from the Famicast. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later.